Room-based location detection lets your smart home know exactly who is in what room, which you can then use to really supercharge your automations. Your smart home can now automatically show your favourite photographs on a nearby smart display and play your favourite music. This music could then follow you around the house as you move from room to room. If you stay in one room long enough, the temperature and lighting can automatically adjust to your preferred levels. And what about if you're in a room with your partner? Well then the house will be smart enough to know that their preferences are more important than yours and adjust itself accordingly. I've even put a tracker on my dog so I can see where he is on a floor plan of my house because if you can't see him, he's probably doing something that he shouldn't. The smart home also checks to make sure he's not asleep in the kitchen before sending out the robot vacuum cleaner on its daily cleaning cycle. Want to know how to set this up in your home? Then let's take a look. I've been using room-based location detection for several years, and I actually made a video about it before. That video was based on my previous smart home, where I used a platform called ES Presence, running on some ESP32 devices, to sniff out the Bluetooth addresses of my and my partner's mobile phones. Our phones were configured to transmit Bluetooth low energy signals, known as BLE beacons, at regular intervals, which ES Presence would then listen out for, and based on the signal strength of each of these beacons, it could roughly determine which phone, and therefore which person, was in each room. This worked great, but it had one main drawback. I had to dedicate a whole ESP32 device to running ES Presence. I now use these devices all over my home to do various jobs, and these run ESP Home. I have everything Presence 1s and lights doing presence detection. I have an ESP32 bed sensor that detects if we're in bed. And I wanted to be able to use these existing ESP Home devices to do the tracking alongside whatever other job they're already doing. It turns out that you can use a hacks integration called Bermuda BLE Triangulation for this. It lets you use ESP Home Bluetooth proxies to set up tracker nodes that you can place in each room. It works the same way as my old ES Presence setup, with these Bluetooth proxies scanning for BLE beacons, measuring their signal strength, and using this to tell Home Assistant what rooms it thinks that beacon is in. I've been using it for a couple of months now and it's been working great. In this video, I'm going to show you how I set this up, how I configured my ESP Home devices to do this Bluetooth sniffing, and a few examples of automations that use this location automation. This video goes hand in hand with my automatic Home Assistant mobile dashboard video, which is one of my favourite smart home things ever. My mobile dashboard adjusts itself based on the room that my phone is in, so that the right controls for that room are always shown without any extra taps or going into any menus. It's been an absolute game changer for my house, and I've linked a video about how I set it up in the description below. Before we get started, you'll need to have a few things already set up. Firstly, you'll need Home Assistant set up with the Home Assistant Community Store, known as Hacks, and you'll need MQTT configured and running. Secondly, you'll need ESP Home up and running and some ESP32 devices like these. You can buy them everywhere now, and I personally like the M5 Stack Development Kits. They're relatively affordable, they're small, and they come inside a case. But there are cheaper options out there as well. And finally, you'll need a Bluetooth beacon to track, and I'll show you a couple of ways that you can do this. The first way is to track your mobile phone. I'm using the Home Assistant Android app, which can be configured to act as a Bluetooth beacon. There are also options available for iPhone, and you can find instructions for that on the Bermuda GitHub page. The second way is using a Bluetooth beacon device, like a tile or something like that, which is what I use to track my dog. Once you have all of these things, you're ready to get started. This is a pretty technical subject, and this video is meant to be a high-level overview of the whole end-to-end -end process. To make things easier for you, I've written a detailed article on my Home Automation Guy website that goes into much more detail with screenshots, links, and the code samples you can copy and paste to get this working. I suggest you watch this video to get an overview, and then, if you want to set this up in your own home, you can visit the article linked in the description below and follow along at your own pace. Alright, let's get started. The first thing we'll need to do is install the Bermuda Hacks integration, and the instructions for that are all on the GitHub page for the integration, which I've linked in my article. It's pretty easy. Click the bright blue Open Hacks repository button, add the custom repository, and download it. Once it's installed, you need to restart Home Assistant to finish the installation. Finally, head on over to the integrations page, and the Bermuda integration should have been detected. Click Configure to finish adding it to Home Assistant. Great, part one is done. This integration will let you register beacons to track in Home Assistant as entities, but we'll get back to that a bit later. For now, we need to configure our tracker nodes using our ESP32 device. This is what you'll need to place in each room, and it sniffs out the Bluetooth beacons and reports their signal strength back to the Hacks integration. This next part assumes you've already installed the ESP Home dashboard. 
I'm using the official ESP Home Home Assistant add-on. You'll need to now install ESP Home onto your device via the web flashing utility. Grab your ESP device, attach it to a good quality USB data cable, and plug it into your computer. Open up a web browser and go to web.esphome.io and click the connect button. Hopefully your ESP device is detected and you can select it from the list and then click connect. If it's not listed here, you can click cancel and the website will give you some instructions about how to fix that. You usually just need to make sure the proper drivers are installed and the website links to those. Once it's connected, click the prepare for first use link to install the ESP Home base firmware onto your device. It's going to take a couple of minutes to install. When it's done, click the connect to Wi-Fi button and put in the details for your Wi-Fi network. Be aware that this will need to be a 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi network. Not many ESP32 devices support 5 GHz. If everything's worked properly, you should be able to go back to your ESP Home dashboard and see that the new ESP device has been automatically detected. Click the Adopt button, give the device a name, and this will bring it into your dashboard for you to manage. Now that you've got the device adopted, you can add the bits of code needed to turn it into a Bluetooth proxy. Once again, this is all listed down on the article for you to follow along with. Scroll down to the bottom of your ESP Home code and add a line that says Bluetooth underscore proxy and then a colon, just like this. Now you can save the code and install it to the device. I usually do this over my Wi-Fi connection. Once the code has been compiled and pushed over to the device, it is now running as a Bluetooth proxy. You can now plug this device in somewhere in the room that you want to track presence in. You may need to play around with where these devices are plugged in until you get the best results. I try to plug them in near to where we spend most of the amount of time in that room. So near the sofa in the living room, the dining table in the kitchen, and my desk in my office. And you can do this again and again with more ESP devices for each room in your house. If you already have ESP Home devices, you can just add this line to the existing code and it turns that device into a tracking node. Or if you have everything smart home sensors, like the Everything Presence 1 or Everything Presence Lite, you can configure those as trackers as well. The Everything Presence Lite actually has Bluetooth proxy capabilities turned on out of the box, so you shouldn't need to do anything special. If you have an Everything Presence 1, you need to change the firmware to the one that turns Bluetooth proxy on. To do that, use the ESP Home Code Editor to change the package that is installed on your ESP one to use the hyphen BLE version. You can even use Shelly Relays as trackers. The Plus versions of Shelly Relays have Bluetooth support built into them, and you can go to the device in the Home Assistant Shelly integration, click Configure, and turn on active Bluetooth scanning for the devices you want to act as trackers. You will need to make sure that every device you've set up as a tracker has an area assigned to it in Home Assistant. That includes ESP Home trackers, the Everything Presence sensors, and the Shelly devices. Bermuda uses the location that the tracker has been added to as the location that it will report the beacon as being in. Now there's just one piece of the puzzle left, and that's setting up the devices we actually want to track. These are the things that are attached to the people, pets, or objects that move around your house. I track the rooms that my partner and I are in, or where our dog is, but you can just as easily track other things with this, such as your keys, your wallet, or where your children are if you want to be weird. In our house, I track the location of my and my partner's Android phones, because we usually have them with us. And if we don't, we don't really need the house to know about it. You know, like if we're in the bathroom or something. That's a lie. I always take my phone to the toilet with me. I respond to all of the comments on my videos from the toilet. Don't believe me? Leave a comment below and find out. And whilst you're down there, why not hit the subscribe button? The Home Assistant Android app, which is installed on both of our phones, has the ability to function as a BLE beacon. This broadcasts a Bluetooth signal from the app at regular intervals, which is then detected by your new ESP tracker nodes. To set this up, you need to go to the Home Assistant app and into the menu and then to settings. From here, you can open up the companion app settings and the manage sensors area. Scroll down to the Bluetooth sensors area and tap on the BLE transmitter. Enable the sensor and scroll down. I really suggest that you turn on the transmit on home network Wi-Fi SSID only option. That means it'll only broadcast the beacon when you're connected to your home Wi-Fi, which will save your phone battery when you're out and about and stop random Bluetooth sniffers on the street from tracking you. Enable the transmitter and select your transmit power. You may need to play around with this for a bit to get the best results, but I found that low worked best for me. If you set it too high, you might be reported in a room far away and it will eat up more of your battery. Set it too low and it won't be strong enough to be detected by a tracker sitting at the other end of your room. And finally, write down this UUID here, because you'll need it for the next step. If you're tracking something else, like dogs, keys, or wallets, you can buy special Bluetooth beacon devices. These are small devices designed to go on keyrings and such, and they have a battery in them to broadcast out the BLE beacon signal. 
A popular model of these are the tile beacons, which come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. You can also get different brands, like this one that I bought on Amazon to attach to my dog's collar. It's really small and light, it's cheap, and you can replace the battery in it. So many of these beacons don't have replaceable batteries, which I find terrible from an e-waste point of view. Once you get the device and power it on, it should start broadcasting the BLE beacon signals. You can find out the address of your beacon using a Bluetooth scanner app on your mobile phone. I use one called Light Blue, and when you open it up, it'll show you all of the Bluetooth devices that it can find nearby. My house happens to have a lot of them. You can filter these out by applying a signal strength filter so that it only shows the ones that are really close by. Then just move your tag up close to your phone and it should detect the beacon. Write down this MAC address as we're going to need it next as well. I then attached this beacon to my dog's collar, and all was going well until he started chewing at it. The last thing I need is for my dog to swallow a CR2032 battery and some electronics, so I bought a silicon air tag holder that fits onto his collar and holds it into place. Everything that I've used here is linked in the article I mentioned earlier. And finally, we put it all together in Home Assistant and start tracking these beacons. Go to your integrations page, and then click on the Bermuda integration, and then click Configure. Here you can set some of the global options, but honestly, I haven't really changed any of these default settings, and it seems to be working fine for me. You might need to tweak these in your house to get the best results. Then click the Select Devices button, and it will show you all of the BLE beacons that any of your Bluetooth proxy tracking nodes can currently see. Find the ones that you recorded the UUID and MAC addresses of before, and click on them to start tracking. This will then create a device for each of your beacons, showing the area that it is detected in and a few other entities as well. Once you have everything configured, you should see these entities change from room to room as you move about your house, and you can now use them in automations. For example, here's an automation that changes the temperature of a room based on who's in it. This automation is triggered when either my partner or I am detected in the kitchen for more than five minutes. Each of these triggers has a trigger ID associated with it. And when the automation is triggered by my partner being present, it sets the temperature of the kitchen thermostat to her preferred temperature. When the automation is triggered by me being present, the condition first checks to see if Heather is also present in the kitchen, and if she isn't, it sets the target temperature to my preferred temperature. I don't actually use this automation, because changing the thermostat on my underfloor heating system so often is pretty inefficient but it would work really well if you're using an air conditioning system. Or you can use this same type of automation to play different music or adjust the lights based on who is in the room. I use the presence detection in the automation that runs the robot vacuum cleaner when we leave the house. I use a not condition to confirm that the dog is not in the kitchen before it runs a clean. They, um, don't get on so well. <laughs> what would you use this type of location information for in your home? Let me know in the comments below. I always learn so much from people leaving comments, and a whole heap of my smart home automations and gadgets that I've bought have been suggested by you guys. If you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up. Or, if you're feeling particularly generous, you can give me a super thanks or a PayPal donation to help support the channel. If you've already donated in the past, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. It really does mean a lot to me. For me, the most useful thing I do with this location information is use it to show the right dashboard on my mobile for the room I'm currently in. It's so dang awesome, and it's a topic of this video right here, so go check it out. Also, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you know when I release future videos, and then together we can make your home smarter.